Welcome to video series of OpenYAN. This video is about multi-core processors in the computer architecture series. One constant in computing world is that the world's hunger for faster performance is never satisfied. Every new performance advancement in the processor leads to another level of greater performance demands from the businesses and consumers. Today, these performance demands are not just for speed, but also for smaller, more powerful mobile devices, longer battery life, quieter desktop PCs, and the enterprise better price to performance ratio per watt and lower cooling costs. People want improvements in productivity, security, multitasking, data protection, game performance and many other capabilities. So one of the solutions for that is the multi-core CPU from the computer architecture designers. A multi-core processor is an integrated circuit to which two or more processors have been attached for enhanced performance, reduced power consumption and more efficient simultaneous processing of multiple tasks. A dual core setup is somewhat similar to that of having multiple separate processors installed in the same computer, but because the two processors are actually plugged into the same socket, the connection between them is faster. Ideally, a dual core processor is nearly twice as powerful as a single core processor, but in practice, performance gains are said to be about 50%. A dual core processor is likely to be around one and a half times as powerful as a single core processor. Cores may or may not share the caches or the internal memory as we had seen in the earlier videos and they may, not, may implement message passing or shared memory inter-core communication methods. Common network topologies to interconnect the memory includes the bus, the ring, the two-dimensional mesh topologies or the crossbar topologies. And also in the dual multi-core architecture, the cores can be homogeneous in which in implies they are identical cores or they can be heterogeneous multi-core multi systems having cores that are not identical. Just as with the single core process, cores in the multi-core systems can also implement the vector processing as is the GPU we have seen earlier, or single instruction multi-data path as we have seen in the von Neumann architecture video, or the multi-threading. What we see here is the evolution from a single core architecture to that of multi-core. In the single core, as we have seen in the von Neumann architecture video, there are the registers, the control unit, the ALU, the bus interfaces to the north and south bridges. Over here in the multi-core architecture, we have the registers, the ALUs and the registers and the ALUs for multiple cores and there is this common bus interface that carries the data to and out from the cores. So the cache memory is a different subject which we will see in the next slides. Let's just take this as an example for multiple cores that are there in a given process. Now, in case of a single core processor, we can have a single process running and in case of a multi-core processor, we can have multiple processors running at the same time. But is this what it is that can be done? No, we can even move further and go on for multiple threads in a single process thereby taking off time slicing. So we can have, if you have a multiple cores, we can have multiple processes and in a single process, if we have multiple threads, then we can have so many instructions running at the same time and add into the get that of the instruction level par parallelism that we had seen in the previous videos, then we can have so much of parallelism implemented by using the multiple cores. Let's just see what is there inside a multi-core processor when we slice and dice it. We have the two basic building blocks of in a dual core processor, we have the CPU cores as one block and then the caches as the second block. The CPU core along with its L1 caches forms its own block so that whatever data is needed for the CPU at that point of time, just at that right time, is there along with the core itself. Then during the back in the back side, it is connected through the interfaces of bus with the L2 caches or the L3 caches. And the L2 L3 caches is common for all the CPU cores. Then this whole entity is connected to the DMA, to the uh, GPU and all those through the north and south bridge. This is what how the von Neumann architecture for a single core processor has evolved into dual core and also the multi core. A man cannot serve two masters. Similarly, a single mem main memory cannot serve multiple cores exclusively without any problems. Let's just take this example over here. We have four different cores and there is one single main memory. Each and every core is associated with an exclusive one or more level of caches. So I can have a L1 or L2 cache which is associated with the cores and the problems of cache hit, cache misses are all taken care as we had seen in the earlier videos. Now the problem comes when we have the cores accessing the main memory. 
What if there is a variable x with a value of 1000 which is being accessed by a core 1 and at the same time it is being accessed by the core 3 also. Let's say the core 1 is trying to read the value of x and the core 3 is trying to write the value of x. The value of x is 1000 and core 3 if it is trying to write, change the value to 2000, what does it happen? How does it get resolved? Therein comes the problem of cache coherence. The cache coherence is solved by having the way of directory or the dictionary method and then there is a pro the solution of snooping. The directory or dictionary method is very simple wherein the main memory is partitioned into four different cases, four different areas in this case and each area is exclusively meant for one single core. There are obvious problems in this. The second part is that of snooping wherein each and every core snoops the data that is traveling on the intercode bus always and it finds out what is being changed and what is being read and thereby comes the solution to cache coherence. There are problems in it, but this is these are the two approaches to solving the cache coherence problem. So, how do we solve the cache coherence problem and write an application or program which is suitable for multiple cores? We are seeing that even having two cores doesn't make, make a 200% advantage, it just gives 150% advantage. So, how do we go about it? Managing concurrency acquires a central role in developing the parallel applications. The basic steps in designing parallel applications are listed here. They are partitioning, communication, combination and mapping. The partitioning stage of the design is intended to expose the opportunities for parallel execution. Hence, the focus is on defining a large number of small tasks in order to yield what is termed as a finely grained decomposition of a problem. So, as we had seen in the first video and the very first videos, it is like breaking a problem into smaller tasks. Like if you want to go to a office or college, the problem of even finding a sock and putting it into a right foot is a pro partitioning problem. Then comes the communication part. The tasks generated by the partition are intended to be executed concurrently, but they cannot be in general executed independently. The computation is to be performed in one task will typically require the data associated with the other task. Data must then be transferred between the tasks so that they allow the computation to proceed. This information flow is specified in the communication phase of the design. Combination is the third stage when the development moves from the abstract to that of the concrete. The developers revisit the de decisions made in the partitioning and the communication phases with a view to obtain an algorithm that will execute efficiently on some class of parallel computer. In particular, the developers consider whether it is useful to combine the task, identify the partitioning phase, or to even partition a task which is being identified in the partitioning phase. So this is where we slice and dice the different tasks that are being identified in the partitioning and communication phases. Mapping is the fourth and the final stage of the design in the parallel algorithms, wherein the developer specify where each task is to execute. This mapping problem does not arise on uniprocessors, but on a shared memory computer this provides an automatic task scheduling. There are the concepts of affinities to the cores and all those but there is a problem for the operating system to take care of. In the next video, we will discuss about data center architecture wherein this single von Neumann architecture has evolved into multiple cores and then how on to the data center view of the computer architecture. Thank you for watching this video. Join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash openyarn and write to us at ping at openyarn.com and visit us at openyarn.com. Have a nice day. Have a nice week. Bye.